Growing Big with Steve Bartilla. One of the best ways to manipulate the deer woods is frankly with a chainsaw. Now, it's quick, instantaneous, and when you do it right, you can produce significant results in nothing more than a day's worth of work. What we're going to talk about today specifically is hinge cutting. And even micromanaging it down a little bit more, we're going to talk about hinge cut bedding areas. As you'll find, you know, as you go, th as the show unravels, there's all sorts of different ways that you can use hinge cuts. You can go ahead and create screens, you can create blockades, you can create bedding areas, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So how do you go about creating a hinge cut bedding area? What, the first thing you need to understand is how you hinge a tree. Now, hinging a tree, all, you're really doing nothing more than cutting just far enough through that tree so that tree falls down, but still maintains that connection to the root system. If it can, can, if it can maintain that connection to the root system, that tree can live. Before you hit the woods though, well frankly what we're going to do to cover ourselves is we're going to suggest that you hire professional loggers to do this. Now, if you do decide to do this yourself though, a few rules to keep in mind. First, there's no excuse to be out there with a chainsaw unless you're wearing a helmet and chaps. None whatsoever. Next, always, always, always play safety first. We're talking about deer here, people. It's not worth risking a life. Now, if that tree's got dead branches on it, you know what? There's a reason that loggers call them widow makers. You leave it the heck alone. On hinge cutting, you never fight tree lean. You have to take the tree the way it's leaning. And you know what? If you're uncomfortable, you walk away from that tree. But really what you're trying to do is you're trying to cut that tree a percentage of the way through to get that tree to fall, but maintain that connection to the root system. If it maintains that connection to the root system, a percentage of the trees are going to live. And you just created cover just like that. So what I do is I go into areas that I believe, okay, I want deer to bed here. So I will hinge cut anywhere from a quarter to an acre area. I'm going to try, I'm going to try to create a false ceiling. By that, what I mean is I want to drop the biggest trees first and then lay the littler trees over top of it. So now those deer can skirt around inside there with no problem whatsoever. It's very, very effective. Some species don't hinge as well as others. They'll go ahead and snap and go to the ground. That's okay, because you've went ahead and you've opened the area up to sunlight. By opening it up to sunlight, you get all these new sprouts coming up, weeds, grasses, and uh, saplings. Just like that, you increase the level of browse in your woods, okay? And also, as I said, all your trees, for as much as I want to create that false ceiling, if I don't, if a bunch of them go down to the ground, that's okay because I can. if it gets too thick, I can always cut trails through there. What we're really trying to do is we are trying to create an area that has a surplus of brows and a surplus of cover. You do that as long as it's not in a ridiculous area and you're going to get your does to bed there. So what are some of the traits that does like? when it comes to bedding area. In swamp countries, the edges of swamps are good locations. In hill country, the tops are very good. The bottoms are very good. Points work out well as, as also, but I tend to save those for bucks. Now, I don't create very many buck beds. What I do is I just leave the obvious buck bedding locations alone because the bucks already want to bed there. If I'm going to do anything, I'll go in and I'll, draw, I'll hinge one or two trees and create a little igloo that they can climb, that they can go ahead and crawl underneath. They've got an entrance, they've got an exit, they've got a little bit extra cover. But buck beds, in my opinion, frankly, are grotesquely overrated. I have exceptionally good luck getting bucks to bed in areas that they already want to bed. So what good is it doing creating a buck bed? They want to bed there already. In areas that they don't naturally want to bed, it doesn't matter how good a cover I create, they don't bed there at a high percentage. Growing Big is brought to you by Wildlife Research Center, the gold standard. Reconics, see what you've been missing. Antler King, bigger bucks, healthier deer. The Heater Body Suit, you stay warm or your money back. Furminator, the best food plot implement on earth. 
Bush Hog, performance you can count on. Redneck Blinds, the best hunting blinds on the planet. Chestnut Hill Nursery and Orchards. And foodplotsfordeer.com, planning your habitat improvements and improving your hunting. That said, those are a little different. They're easier. They want to be next to food. They want cover. As long as you're not trying to put it on a side hill like that, you're going to have much, much higher success rate. Always remember though, lay out these improvements before you do them. You lay it out so that having deer bed here and having them feed there ends up working into your hands as a hunter. Growing Big with Steve Bartilla.